Okay, so I've painted the drain pipes. Oh yes. And it was really easy to do. I also, even if I just grab my little tweezers because they're still drying. Oh yeah, I've painted the tops of the chimney pots. Because I'm hardcore, folks. Hardcore. I don't need no marker pens. No, 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 no. I play on super hardcore difficulty. Right, so the uh, drain pipes have been painted, as you can see. And I really recommend this tool. His name is Sam. And he is absolutely awesome. He, he basically holds anything you want in any position you want for as long as you want. And never gets tired. Never gets tired. And he's just brilliant. Look at that. I literally put them into those um, little grabbers, the crocodile clips, and then painted them and just maneuvered Sam around as they were painted. And they they are perfect. They're absolutely perfect. And then so once they're done, I should just simply snap them, well, cut them out of the, the little sprue thing, um, go over the bit that's got a grey mark, and then job done. Ready to apply, basically. And yeah, if you're doing lots of model work, or even if you're just doing work on model railways, I really do recommend picking one of these little tools up. I don't know what it's called. I really don't. But the grabbers are, they are so useful. They're fantastic. You can use it for holding train parts. You can use it for holding airfix kits. And the magnifying glass doubles up as a rather awesome um, tool to incinerate ants with. Well hey and welcome back to um, another part of the video, I <laughs> don't know how many days later it is, um, these things take some time. Um, I've just given the uh, cottage here a second coat of whitewash. Now, I know that this is going to be a little bit radical from what you're expecting to see, but um, trust me, I will get there in a second. Let me just give this brush a really good clean. This is an amazing brush by the way. This is um, a Tamiya professional modeling brush and it is fantastic <laughs> it was about two or three quid but definitely definitely worth it anyway um, I'll try that in a second um, the, yeah the reason it's white is because if you look at the instructions on, on um, this particular workers cottage they want you to paint it in a Cotswold sort of stone color and well I guess it would end up looking something like that now I, I didn't particularly like that, I didn't particularly want that. I much preferred that. Um, it says here, this whitewashed cottage has a traditional terracotta tiled roof, demonstrating the model effect that you should aim for when weathering, weathering the roof of the cottage. So basically this photo is just to show you the roof, but I really liked the cottage. I thought it was like a typical little worker's cottage that you'd find next to a railway. And um, it's basically just white bricks it's just brickwork that's been painted with a you know a sort of white emulsion a white paint over the top a whitewash as they've called it and i thought yeah that's really nice i'm going to do that and it does repeatedly talk about how you can do things the way you want them to you you can do things however you want to do um and however you want to do them so i thought yeah let's go for that and so here's the workers cottage with a, it's a bit sticky because the paints all ran to the bottom and stuff. But this is the workers cottage with a second coat of whitewash all around it. 
The first coat looked pretty rough because of the grey primer underneath and it may even need a third coat to get it really nice and white. But um, I'm obviously going to weather that afterwards and make it look grubby in places as well. So that would be dead nice. Uh, don't worry about going over bits of brickwork like all this relief stuff on the front. There's no need to worry about that. You can see I've gone over onto the door there, I've gone over on the window frame there. It doesn't matter because all those bits are going to be done afterwards. So it totally doesn't matter. Um, you just get the whitewash down first and then you can paint over the fine detail parts later. Really not an issue. So, the only problem with this paint um, is it takes a long time to dry. Um, it takes about 12 hours or something to completely dry. It's ridiculous. So, uh, what I am going to do is have to just leave it now and um, <laughs> I'll try to get some other videos done. But yeah, the Model Railway Village thing is taking a long time because I'm doing it all my own way and I'm doing it to such a high standard. But the paint I'm using is this uh, number 130, a satin white. To be honest, it's not that satin. Well, no, I suppose it is, I suppose it is. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's definitely not, not matte anyway, and I don't think it should be. I don't think brickwork should be matte. I think it should have a little bit of uh, shimmer to it, a little bit of shine so yeah the satin should do a perfectly good job um right well i don't know what stage you'll see next but um i hope you keep watching and i'll see you soon okay well another day has passed and the model has had ages to dry now it's had well over 12 hours but it's worked the uh, finish is dry to the touch and it's it's coming up quite nice now actually um the great primer is a very good primer it, it leaves a fantastic finish uh, for paint to adhere to, but I must admit, in this instance, I should have used what? 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 What's what? I should have used white matte primer, not grey primer, because um, obviously putting white onto, you know, putting a lighter colour onto a darker colour is quite hard. You should do it the other way around, really. But then I didn't know I was going to make it white, did I? I thought that I would be painting it Cotswold stone and not white. But I'm I'm liking it. Even though it's still not finished, it's going to need another coat or two. And then of course we've got to do the detailing and the roof and then the weathering. It's coming up pretty nice. Now something else I'm going to um, quickly show you is how to deal with little gaps like that. Do you see that gap down the side? And there's some minor gaps there. Although they're, they're, they're not really gaps, they're just that's, that's just like a lighting effect. But this here is an actual gap. And I'm going to use this very, very potently smelling stuff called white putty. And you can buy it by Humbrol and lots of other makes as well. But basically we're just going to smear little bits of that using a cocktail stick into these gaps. Uh, fill them up, sand them down and then paint over them. It's pretty simple to do. I've done it with lots of models and lots of aircraft and stuff so I shall show you that. But, um, yeah, it's coming on. It's coming on really nicely. It, I, I really do like the white finish, and I think when I do my weathering, when I apply weathering to this, it's, it is going to look magnificent. Absolutely brilliant. Because, obviously, a whitewashed building such as this would really show up weathering. You know, um, it, it's pretty good at hiding bird poo, but it will definitely show up moss and... Um, wear and tear, grime from the rain and stuff like that, so yeah, it should be good.